For most people, St. Patrick's Day is all about celebrating their Irish roots with a pint of whiskey and a plastic shamrock pinned to their shirt. But there is much more to Ireland than whiskey and shamrocks. The land, shrouded by a dense fog and a chill in the air, is the home of many terrifying legends. So, in celebration of the holiday, I'll be sharing five stories I found told to give nightmares to even the bravest of Irishmen. Outside of a church in Bollingspital, Ireland, stands a statue of the Virgin Mary. It's no different or unique than any others. Her hands are pressed together in prayer, her eyes lifted toward the heavens. At first glance, there seems to be nothing wrong. But many have claimed to see the statue rise up from her stone pedestal and begin walking toward them. Some say that she is pursuing people who have sinned, or perhaps she is trying to chase away an unclean spirit. But either way, next time you pass by a Virgin Mary statue, be sure you have a clean conscience and try not to make eye contact. Similar to the German legend of doppelgangers, the Fetch are your identical twin. They wander through the world, watching over you at all times. They can cause mischief in your life by impersonating you, or they can bring good fortune into your life. But good or bad, if you ever make eye contact with your Fetch, you will die, and the Fetch will take your place. No one will ever know the difference. Since the year of 1878, residents of Ballycotton Island have been seeing strange things out on the misty horizon of the sea. Every seven years, for only one day, an island appears out of nowhere. The island is lined with tall standing trees and rolling hills. It is beautiful, but no man has ever stepped foot on it. When the island appears, fishermen will sail closer. Sometimes the island will vanish before they ever reach it, and other times, the fishermen are the ones to vanish, never to be seen again. But no one has ever reached the island, at least, no one who has lived to tell the tale. A man completely surrounded by water is destined to turn to the sea for resources. Sailors and fishermen brave the waters around Ireland to provide for their homeland. But from the waters surrounding them, a legend was born. The Dobhar Shu, a sea monster. Its name translates to water hound. And when you hear what it looks like, you'll understand why it was so appropriately named. The monster has a wolf-like body slender, strong, and covered with sleek gray hair. It has fangs like a wolf, and it craves fresh meat. It moves swiftly and silently through the water, and when it attacks, it latches onto its victim with sharp canine teeth and drags them down below the water. But the worst part of the Dobhar Shu is that there are many of them, and like wolves, they travel in packs. Many have claimed to see these bizarre and terrifying creatures circling their boats at night, waiting for the fish nets to get dragged in, or for an unfortunate fisherman to fall overboard. Their existence is heavily debated, but if you ever find yourself out to sea and spot what looks like a helpless canine friend struggling in the water, consider yourself warned to turn back for home. Our last story for the night is an old one, one which has been told for many generations. The legend tells of a woman. She has no name. Her hair color changes from story to story, her eye color too. But one thing can be agreed on. She is beautiful. She speaks softly. She is kind. She is caring. She is perfect and many young men have fallen in love with her, and they all made the same fatal mistake. A cool, foggy night can be romantic, and the woman's beauty can be alluring. 
But beware, young men, all is not as it seems. If you find yourself meeting and falling in love with a beautiful stranger, run, run far away. She is an evil spirit, her beauty is a snare, her kiss is deadly. Any man to kiss the lips of the beautiful stranger will die instantly, and she will claim your soul. You will never find rest, and she will wander back into the fog and wait for the next victim to fall for her feminine wiles.